Hello once again everyone. We rejoin Faros here at the tip top of Shulva, ready to head on and clear the last bosses of the area. It's been a little bit of a trek through Shulva, but I've managed to make it all in fairly good time, and here we find ourselves in the Cave of the Dead at last. The boss that's coming up is a bit of a trick. It involves a lot of kiting and separating of the enemies that are there, but it's not too terribly bad once you actually have a hang of what you're doing in the fight. Quite honestly, I just kind of like the run-up because there's a lot of really nice loot all out and about down here in this area. I know there's at least two bright bugs and some petrified somethings down here, so a lot of really nice stuff. All these soldiers can be easily backstab cheesed, so it's very nice. Drop on down this hole, you can see that that's the way you're supposed to go. So as long as I ow, go clockwise from there, I can make sure that I pass down every last loot path. It's always better just to have your shield up in case. Okay, bait him on over. There we go. Backstabs, always lovely. There are a few of these guys around here, but... Oh, come on. And I was like, thank you, give me a stagger at least. Don't think there's anything over there. The petrifying statues are annoying, but that's really all they are. Oh, come on. There we go. There is something over there, so... What's nice is that there's a lot of holes everywhere, so you can actually avoid the brunt of these statues if you perform a few interesting little jumps like that. Come on around. I believe there's one chest up here. Yep. And that should be everything for this first location. And now I can drop down once again. Ow. It's just annoying because it staggers. Oh, I need to pass him by. That's not an option. Also, jumping can be very useful for clearing your way over their heads sometimes. I just want to see, can I get a hit on this guy? If I aim it properly. Uh, maybe needs a little bit better aim. I can! Good. Their tails stick out just a little bit, so you can actually... There we go. Get a hit on them if you're finagling it just right with a very downward weapon. I just want to have really fast, strong attacks versus this guy, so switch into my bastard sword. Wow. Ow. That was really the wrong time for me to clear that. There we go. I should be able to take him out on his lonesome without getting touched. Yep. Because he locks himself to really long attacks. For no reason whatsoever. Life gem that. One Estus as well. Oh, come on. Down this side passage, there's the petrifying statue there that just looks friggin' weird. It looks like the Pharos face, and the two eyes and the white gaping mouth. But it's basically a bigger version of these statues, so I think this is one of the really big and important pieces of lore that connects Pharos to the statues that we can see everywhere. It's basically just a scaled up version of the poison and petrification statues and it very clearly has the Pharos face so it's just something you want to have in your pocket for a little bit of extra reinforcement of who Pharos is and what he's done. Now we're coming on in. Immediately just ignore these two. Hopefully they waste an attack trying to hit you, but you want to take care of the archer first. You can not actually stagger them. It's just very difficult, and the moment they start fighting back, disengage and just make your way down to an elevation change, because dropping down a level or uh, hiding behind stalactites is the best way to kite them out. They have 
very big issues dealing with those sorts of level changes. The archer is fairly unprotected most of the time, but sometimes they get their act together long enough to actually put up a solid defense. And those arrows are just the most annoying thing because they have an amazing capacity to stagger you. I mean, they are great arrows, so you really shouldn't expect anything less, but they still suck. Dropping down, as I've said, will draw them out and give you a little bit of time to hopefully get a hit or two off on her, the archer, but sometimes she's kiting a around a little bit too much. There we go. Now I can disengage again, come on down, and keep drawing them out as best I can. See if I can... nope, Varg isn't going to throw out a nice swing. Oh, this is this is the tricky part because you you do need to engage, and they actually don't distance themselves very often. If you can get the parry, you can rely on the pseudo invincibility frames to just immediately take him out. And you do want to take out the afflicted grave robber first, since he can actually bleed you while you're uh, mid parry on Varg. Oh. That didn't work out. That did not work out. I regret everything. Now let's come down here. Double S just that. Oh dear. They actually were smart and headed down. If they ever actually follow you down, then you really need to just get out immediately because bad things will happen if they actually get a hold of you down there. Oh, can't parry a jumping attack. But he is extremely low, so if I can get a chance to fight him one-on-one, -on -one, I can hopefully do something. Oh, that backstab would have ended him. It makes me really sad. Varg is healing, which gives me a little bit of time, but uh, the afflicted grave robber is not being nice about it. Just keep parrying, and you should be able to take them out with relative ease. There we go. Come on. I can trade hits. I can't trade hits. I can't trade hits. I forget. Oh, gosh. Varg is just healing up a storm. Nothing to be done about that. Let's start kiting back up here because now they're both together. Nope. Can't parry that. Can I get a parry? No. Come on. Really, Varg? You were you just did that. There we go. Now it's a 1v1, and I can deal with Varg quite nicely. He even sets himself up for a backstab to delete all that healing he just did. How nice of him. He does leave himself so open for those backstabs that even if you stagger from missing a parry, you can still just come right around behind. Basically, I would say just equip your strongest backstab weapon or parry weapon, preferably a halberd or a dagger or something along those lines, and just go to town on parrying them. They're actually a really great boss to practice your parries against. Whether you're using a small shield, a parry shield like a buckler or target shield, or even just a regular two-handed parry. They give you a lot of chances, and Varg especially gives you a lot of time to set up your parry versus him so it's just something you want to have in your pocket because it makes the fight a lot easier and that's that fight so I'm gonna collect these last two bits of loot and I'm done for Shulba because I'm only on like four of these homeward bones I am just gonna head back to the bonfire the regular way it also grabs me my ten rusted coins which is nice. But, yeah, you can see why the Great Axe is such a great weapon. Very wide sweeping attacks, and it crits just like no one's business. It's, great Axes are one of the better weapons to be critting with these days, just because they have such high damage, and you just get to unload all of that in one really strong swing. I'll admit that that boss fight can be a lot more difficult if you're not used to parrying, but so long as you are, it shouldn't actually give you too much trouble. 
There we are. Bonfire. And that's right. It's time to head on to Drang Lake Castle. Properly this time. We've gone around and collected all the items and loot of Sholva. And so now we can progress onwards with the game. I've got a lot of souls that I can take back once I uh, clear my way on through to Drang Lake Castle, but I want to consolidate that into a single trip. Uh, I was hoping I could one-shot him, but no such luck. Oh, what? The step forward should have killed him. Come on through. I always love seeing ones in weird positions like that. There should be one more of those goblin guys before I head through the Shrine of Winter, so... Just be ready for a quick sprinting attack. And that's all she wrote. Come right on through. <clears throat> there we go. The Shrine of Winter is open before us. We have actually just had confirmation that the uh, final DLC opening will be within the Shaded Wood and not at the end of a Primal Bonfire. So I'm pretty sure that basically guarantees it's going to be the Shrine of Winter as I and most expected. Some people were raising some rumors that, hey, maybe it's going to be the Lost Sinner or maybe it's going to be uh, the Duke's Dear Freya bonfires, but we, we now have confirmation that neither of those is true. Uh, let's get the... Stand up so I can make him sit back down. Oh. Let's just keep swinging. I don't know how I missed the backstab there, but... I get the lance either way. On another of my characters, a Dex Faith build, I actually have been trying out the Hide Great Lance for the first time ever. And my god, does it do amazing damage. I'm just... It is such a good weapon. I really, really enjoy it. Once you get it all the way upgraded, and it upgrades with regular Titanite, which is just fantastic. You can save the rest of your twinkling for other weapons. So, it's definitely a really great weapon in my opinion. Ow. Oh, those archers. God, I'm playing sloppy now that I've just beat Sholva. Coming back to the base game, it's usually a bit easier, but now I'm just mucking it up. There we go. See if the Bastard Sword does any better for me with its slightly faster swings, since they're both going to kill them in two hits either way. Then again, I do want the Great Axe for this next enemy. Just want to be able to unleash as much damage as possible, because Crystal Lizards, so annoying. This one gives you three chunks and a slab, and so it's just such a valuable upgrade takes any weapon from plus 8 to plus 10 immediately, and that's always the uh, hardest little hump to get over. If you're not intending on using the Titanite the, uh, slab, it still allows you to get a weapon from plus 6 to plus 8, which is another really big jump. Let me see. What kind of consumables do I have? I thought I would have more lightning urns, but oh well. Because of the rain, these guys have very low lightning resistance. So if you have lightning urns, you can do very good damage to them. And fighting them both together is probably a bad idea. So any sorts of consumables you can use to make the fight slightly easier, definitely going to be a big help. When it's down to one, you can actually just begin strafing around and cutting them down from behind. but while they're both up, you still need to play defensive and kite back. There we go. Try poison. Yeah, poison is actually a pretty good answer to them as well, because you can kite them down this whole staircase. And once they turn back, you can just keep poisoning them. Oh, come on. There we go. Here we go. This guy activates this, gives me a free item, nice. And I can bring these two over here to activate this. There we go. Yeah, the Bastard Sword's much better for facing them because it's faster swing speed. It allows me to hit before they're quite there. 
come on, grab this while the door is opening. Some nice pyromancy. But yeah, this door takes forever to open up, so I'm going to have to face another wave of those swordsmen before it's ready to let me in. Any second now. Come on. Are there going to be no more swordsmen? Usually there's another wave. No, there we are. I was like, usually there's another wave. Yeah, Bastard Sword just cuts them down to size. Pretty lovely, I've got to admit. Here we are. Oh, Chancellor Welliger here. I don't think he has anything that I need to buy, so I'm actually not going to bother with him. Sometimes the, he has some nice stuff, especially if you're running a lightning build, because he spells the arrows. Maybe even just magic build for the bolts and arrows. If, say, you're really intending on using the, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Dragon Rider bow, the magic arrows he sells are the best ammunition for that. If you're going to let me get the parry, or the repost. Then again, guard break criticals actually do a little bit more depending upon the weapon, so it's actually the preferred outcome there. Same with backstabs. I don't know how it's determined, but certain weapons just do better with certain criticals than others. Swing right on through. Just never stop swinging. It's the way to go. I honestly don't know why that other chamber is back there, other than just keeping it symmetrical, because it actually has nothing in it. There we are. And... That's that, and I can make it down to the next bonfire. Come right on through. This next part is a little bit annoying just because of how many enemies there are and how they aggro, but if you manage it properly, you should never have to face more than two at a time, which is perfectly reasonable. A lot of people complain about having to fight multiple enemies in Dark Souls 2, but... So long as you're not facing three or more at once, managing their aggro is incredibly easy. The possible caveat being boss fights, where it's a little bit more difficult to handle that properly, but even then, you should have a pretty firm grasp on how to handle the situation, if there's only two. Now, just take that on the chin. Let's try that again. I think the Bastard Sword will be better versus these Ruin Sentinels rather than the Great Axe just because it swings a little bit faster and it doesn't leave me as open. I have a little bit less time spent stuck in my animation. Not to mention that I believe they do much similar damage. Oh, come on. There we go. Versus these heavily armored foes. If you're going to be using their one-handed swings, then it's generally going to do quite similar amounts of damage. The reason you use the Great Axe, at least on this character, would be... Oh, really? Huh. But you use it for the stagger, and I'm not going to be staggering the Ruined Sentinels anytime soon. There we go. Now I can face you again. I'll buy your lonesome. Fail the roll, but I've got plenty of Estus. There we go. It's a very repetitive enemy to fight, just because it's wait for them to swing, get behind them. Wait for them to swing, get behind them. They do jump around a little bit, which can be kind of annoying, but it's not a big deal. And you can still take them out just fine. That being said, there's a bunch of loot in the back areas like this, so... Of course, I want to grab everything I can. Royal Soldiers, pretty nice. What do I have equipped? Second Dragon Ring, yeah. I'm not going to be able to replace that for some time now. This one actually has a Rune Sentinel as well. All told, there's five Rune Sentinels here. And the only door that doesn't have a Rune Sentinel behind it, of course, is the exit which I'm not going to use yet because there's a bunch of loot back here. Can I not dodge that from behind? I, I'm pretty sure I can, just wasn't letting me. 
There we go. Now I get the kill shot. A little bit of overkill, but oh well. Sadly, this and the one across from it are both outliers in that that one doesn't have loot, whereas the one across from it doesn't have a Ruin Sentinel. It's a bit strange how they did that, but it works. Roll right on through that, and you can get right behind and start swinging away. Unless you leave yourself open like that. There we are. Just a few more like that, and we're good. There we have it. What did we get? Stone Soldier Spear. It has a really nice range. It's just... I don't know. Very poor damage numbers. So... It's... Honestly, a mediocre spear. Even though spears have become the new flavor of the month, the Stone Soldier Spear isn't as good as it could be. Then again, I know there's people out there who think that every weapon is viable given a certain scenario, which is partially true, so... I would honestly leave it up to you to decide whether or not it's a weapon you want. Ah, I meant to roll. There we go. Swing, swing. And that's all for this chamber. Now I can hop right on down here, grab my lovely Faram armor. Such a nice reminder of last run. Really, that, that was an incredibly fun run for myself. I believe I've talked to him the two other locations, so I'm just going to leave him there for now. Because I don't want to have to uh, leave my rat covenant just yet. I might do that very end game, but not just yet. I had to clear my throat real quick. Here in Majula, there's the lovely, as ever, Harold here, here to take my souls. It's a little bit dark and sinister, sinister if you say it like that, but that is, in effect, what she's doing. Okay. Yeah, that's right, I'm getting my dark up some, now that I'm already full quality. In the end, I want to have it 40-40, 30-30 with points put into whatever else I have as well. Back to Drain Lake Castle. There's a lot more stuff to be done back here. Even a few bosses if we're quick. I do like areas that have multiple bosses. It kind of reminds me of how Dark Souls 1 did it, where plenty of different locations had multiple bosses, like the Undead Burg, Into the Parish, and, oh, come on, there we are, um, and Orlando had a lot of bosses, even some mini-bosses. There was the devilishly tricky Tight Knight Demon in the side Paris chamber looking thing, as well as the both fights with the gargoyles along the bridge, so lots of really fun areas there. Come right on through. This this is just such a weird room, but I don't know. I just chalk it up to Aldia being weird, considering there's a lot of poison involved in this chamber. Come right on up, and here we have the Cyan Knights. Oh, that didn't work out. Can I get a back? Okay, can I get a one hit kill on the backstab for these guys? Didn't want to get knocked out by him. I think I'm far enough away from the curse. Now I want to get away from that. Yeah, I handled that poorly. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so the Bastard Sword will give me a one-shot on the parry. The Great Axe, not so much. Will the Bastard Sword's dagger? It will not, so let's just have none of that. I was hoping that a pair of hits would stagger, but no such luck. Based on that damage number, it would seem that the Bastard Sword has three damage ticks, whereas the... Oh. Goodness. The Great Axe only has two damage ticks. Even though it has larger damage ticks, it will still not quite out-damage the Bastard Sword because it only has... 66% of the 
chances for damage. Oh, look at that backswing. Any weapon that has backswing just makes me so happy. Completely caught that Royal Swordsman off guard. Off the edge with you. I want your item. 5,000 souls, pretty nice. Tag that and head on down. Can I get the plunging attack? I cannot. <laughs> Very silly. Grab myself my Hunter Black Bow, and we can head right on back up and on to the boss at this point. With a side moment for Nishandra, of course. Oh, did I, I don't think I lit that bonfire. Let's just let's just have it lit just in case. Not only just in case, but also because I hate seeing unlit bonfires on the uh, selection of bonfire screen. So I always have to kind of compulsively tag that one. Come right on through. Nishandra's here to greet you. Lovely, lovely woman. Yada yada yada. Skip all her dialogue. Just talking to her allows you to see what bonfires you've missed and which bonfires you've yet to reach, so I always make some time for the good lady. And now I get to face these two bumpkins. Are you gonna do anything? Sprint right around. Oh, take that one right in the face. Always wait till you hear the great arrows fire before you actually move in for damage, because otherwise you could get staggered at a vi Oh, hello! A very inopportune time. However, this one takes damage incredibly easily, which is sad, because you actually get... It's... Oh, goodness. Maybe I should back off some. Heal that on up, and now I can take him out. And let's just go for the cool kill. There we go. Both Dragon Riders down. Grab another one of their souls, which is weird because there's two of them, but I only get one soul. It's kind of strange. And again, I suppose it works the same for the Belfry Gargoyles and several of the other multi-bosses. So, I'm not going to complain too much, but... Now I get to clear through this long little section, which is another one of my more beloved sections in the game, just because it's a nice straight shot through. In fact, you don't even have to deal with it at all, since once you actually tag this coming up golem, you can completely skip the entire area. All you have to do is homeward bone out once you've activated that golem, and you're good. You don't need to do anything else. You've done your duty. So easy to just swing right on through these guys. There we have it. Let's see what I get for a drop. Titanite Slab. Not like I'm ever going to be in need of those ever. With how many they drop in the game. Chunks, on the other hand, they're sort of rare-ish. Come right on in. And another Titanite Slab. Lovely. I mean, who says no to free stuff? <laughs> I know it's a chest, come on. Let me open the chest. Old Knight Hammer. It's a nice, big, heavy weapon for those who are going without scaling. Or, it's a really fun and entertaining weapon to use if you break it because... It does literally zero damage since it has no scaling. Breaking a weapon takes away all of its base damage and leaves behind all of the scaling damage, which is why mundane weapons are fine even when broken because their base damage are so low. It's one of the main reasons why the mundane ladle is as worthless as it is. I mean, it would be so much worse if it didn't have incredibly low base damages because then breaking it, which you're gonna do, almost guaranteed, would cut its damage numbers by even more. Whereas since it's mundane and already has such crap base damage, it only takes 20 damage off the top, which isn't a whole lot. You can gain all that back up just by using the uh, Ring of Blades plus nothing. 
There we go. They give me the kill shot. They're nice. They're friendly. That's all she wrote. Come on over, and another chest for a big-ass pyromancy. Grab that on up. Firestorm. Lovely. And now it is time to face this little trio down here. You don't have to face them all at once. Mastodon aggros very quickly. He will follow you out pretty much no matter where you go. And the two scions will be there for you when you're ready for them. He takes a little while, but he'll go down. He's very weak to thrust attacks, so if you have something like a spear or a thrusting sword, use that instead. It's a much faster way of taking him out. Let's take you on. Come on. Two. Not going to follow it up. Okay. I will take it. If you can lure them into one of their attacks, they carry themselves so ridiculously far forward that you can take quite good advantage of them. I should not have traded there. But I will definitely take that. That's all for this chamber. One more Mastodon, one more Cyan, and three more of those Alon uh, Knights, and we're golden. There we go. Two strong attacks should take care of it for us. One, two. There you go. Now for this little line of characters, I like to take them out. You don't actually have to, you can just head right on below and skip them completely, but they're a nice chunk of souls. And it's just a conga line of backstabs, which is really satisfying. One after another, it's just a real nice line. No drops, but at this point they have nothing good they could drop me. The only thing that they used to have that was of any note to anyone who didn't want to run a Alon Knight cosplay was the Alon Great Blow. And at this point, they give you a free plus five version in the DLC, so you don't even need to worry about getting it as a drop anymore. That's one of the things that I kind of find weird about the DLCs is that they lower the value of the items you've already farmed up in-game because they actually hand some of them to you. Like, I know the Katarina set was incredibly popular for a little subsect of people, and now that you can get all the pieces of it, it just doesn't feel as worthwhile. But I've fought my way back to the bonfire, and now I can head right on up. Once I actually open that door, I'm not going to head on through to the boss. I'm actually going to cut it there after I head back to Majula, spend my souls, and upgrade my Estus Flask. Do I have the uh, last... Mm, no, I don't. I was looking to see if I had the last Sublime Bone Dust of the playthrough, but it would seem I do not. I have a feeling that it's the one that is in front of Undead Purgatory, but don't quite recall whether or not I headed over there or not. Chances are I didn't, just because I don't like the boss very much, and I had no use for any of the area beyond. So I'm probably going to finish out most of the playthrough at just plus four, Estus. I'll always come to the left first, just in case. Get you the key to the King's Passage, which is the key item up here, and then you can connect, collect the others at your leisure. Soul Vessel and a Fire Seat, very nice. And what's in this last one? I believe Great Magic Shield and something else. Strong Magic Shield, that's it. Fun fact is, you can't actually trigger the elevator from below if someone's already standing on the top. So if you come across an invader in this area and don't want to deal with him, you can actually just ride the elevator up, and so long as he doesn't get on when you're coming up, as long as you don't move, he can't actually reach you at all. It's... A nice alternative to alt f and it kind of leaves them just wasting their own time. Which, quite honestly, is just fine and dandy if it's an invader. 
they're coming into your world to screw you up. Balls to that. Here we are. Just want to grab this little bit of loot so I can forget about it later. And back to the bonfire. Soon enough, we'll be getting the uh, aged feather, so we can start homeward boning a lot more often, but I do want to conserve these last few homeward bones that I have. I'm very stingy about consumables, and so just hold on to those until I get the infinite one. It is indeed a shard I found, but first let's level me up some. Mm. Yep. Just pump faith a little bit. Soon enough I'll actually have enough points into everything to actually... Oh, no, I need to have her get the shard, but to actually get a little bit more attunement, and at that point I'll actually have the ability to cast some legitimate spells. Don't know what catalyst I'm going to use just yet, but Black Lady of Staff is a likely candidate. That's all for this episode. I will see you all next time.